And I think that's a very important thing that, that we should remember, to free ourselves so we don't put so much uh, pressure and stress on ourselves. Ron, I got a question about um, programming. Um, what is a good way of, um, when we are in that place of peace and where there's absolutely awesome stillness, and we do have to interact and uh, go about our lives and walk the walk and, and, and do about our daily life uh, in this plane. Um, what is a good way of keeping it so that we don't pick up programmings and then other energies jump onto us when we exchange or when we converse with uh, other humans? Well, the first thing that's uh, going to be hard for you to stomach, okay, <laughs> will be uh, you have things crawling around inside of you, alien life forms that you cannot see. So let's go back before they created and invented the microscope, okay? So that brought us to a new uh, era in technology, and now we can use a microscope to see things in our bloodstream and everywhere else, correct? So we have, wow, this thing to look at us. Well, we don't have one to see alien critters. So when you shake hands with somebody, when you hug somebody, you automatically are picking up their energy, okay? And these things can body hop. So for some of you, this may sound very strange, okay? But just kind of go with this here. Uh, let me take off the energy that you picked up today by touching someone or many people, okay? I'll count to 10 to do this and see how your body feels. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There. Those critters just left you. How does your body feel? Do you feel a little bit lighter? Did some aches and pains leave you? Anybody want to comment? Lighter? Okay, so what happened was these things connect from one person to the next. And they come into you and they live with you. They take your life force energy and they also cause you illnesses and disease. So as far as I don't mind hugging people or touching them, what I do is what I call shrink wrapping. I don't allow my energy field of my body to leave my skin. And that's the protection that, that I use. And I also look for these things to get them out of me. But uh, you know, that's getting kind of off the subject of ascension. But that's what I do you know, as far as that. Uh, I'll see if Halcyon wants to add something or to bring something up because I know she hasn't. Uh well, I, actually, I was absolutely fascinated because basically what everyone is saying here today, going back and forth, back and forth, I'm laughing inside because when I do my workshops, this is the first thing I alert everyone to. I always, always preach self-responsibility, self-empowerment, because ultimately you have to live with the consequences of every decision you make. And when, when you get a personality that is more convicted than your own, it's very, very easy to be swayed. Some people do token questioning. Some people um, just prefer to go with the flow because they don't want to be bothered with making decisions. And if it doesn't work out, they want to say a fail safe of saying, you know, well, it wasn't my decision. I just followed you. But this is your life. It's the only life you have. And from what I have learned, and my reality is, my truth is, I believe it, this is my one shot to get out of here because I don't like it. I don't want to stay. I'm not looking to save the world. I only have to save me. What I could do, I can share the information that I did attain, and if you want to listen, you listen. If you don't want to listen, you don't want to listen. But right now, I'm in a peaceful place. I'm happy. I'm just, I'm, it's unfortunate that some people are still confused. But until you take that step and you go inside and you connect to your spirit and you communicate with your spirit, you will always be confused because you'll always be lost in translation. You'll always be following someone else on their path to where they're going. Um, I would stress and stress and stress and say, do your whole lifetime emotional clearing. It will give you a shot. It will give you an opportunity just to see. 
maybe, maybe what he's saying is right. And maybe it'll remove enough of the densities from you that some of this crazy stuff that's being said here today would begin to make sense. But for myself, I've thrown away enough books. I've, I've, I've spent time saying, <coughs> this is garbage. What do they mean God doesn't exist? What do they mean that Jesus is not real? I saw Jesus. He was as real as the person next to me. But then one day I had to say, wait a second. What if, just what if, I'm wrong? And if the only thing that I'm sure of that is looking out for me that, was, that would, could possibly lead me to where I want to go is my spirit, how do I set about the business of finding and locating the spirit and having the spirit begin to talk to me? And basically the, the clearings that Ron did brought me to such a place and gave me such personal empowerment that I felt secure enough to turn around and said, hey, eh, maybe I'll try to help somebody else. The beauty of it is, <laughs> by helping other people, I'm empowering myself every single day because I'm beginning to live my truth. I don't have to do anything else. I just share with people, and they basically, I can't see it for myself, but I see for them how the things that they're doing, how it's empowering them. And the ascension, is it real? Is it fake? It is. It just is. And you have to accept for yourself whether or not you want to believe that you can get off of this planet or not. And if you decide not to, someone else will make that decision for you. So in, in any case, you're, you're, you're not right or wrong. You're either going to make a decision and make the right decision, or you won't make a decision and someone else will make the decision for you, but a decision will be made. Take your life, take control of your life, and do what you want to do, and let the consequences be your consequence. But there's, there's really nothing that I can say to anyone and nothing I stress personally want to say. Do the whole lifetime clearing, the emotional clearing, defrag, swipe clean the DNA that's carrying all the garbage, that's all the viruses that's polluting your, your life story, and give yourself a chance to begin to make right decisions that will benefit you. That's it. It it's doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. You have to find your truth, and you have to follow your truth, ultimately. And too much is in the, in, in the way of you not being able to do that. The only thing that I have found that ever worked is the whole emotional lifetime clearing. And from there, you can only go from strength to strength, because as the veil falls, you cannot pretend you didn't see it. You cannot pretend you didn't know. You, you can't hide. You, from then, the spirit is there. You cannot hide from spirit because spirit is saying, uh-huh, I've been waiting for you. I've been whispering. Now I'm going to yell in your ear. And then the voice that everybody calls the still small voice, it doesn't, bec it doesn't stay a still small voice. It really becomes a very, very powerful and bold voice. And it just blocks out all the other garbage that people are trying to whisper into your ear. I'll say try it. What do you have to lose? 2,000 years? I mean, <laughs> what can I say? It's, it's utterly, utterly your decision. I have a question for Ron again. Um, I just have to say that when you did that clearing, my knee stopped hurting. And I want to know how I can do it to myself each night so that I can clear whatever I've been around. Well, like, like she was saying, all of, all of the problems that you people are dealing with stem from your ancestors. And what surfaced in this lifetime right now is what your body has chosen to heal along with your spirit. So the first thing is the emotional healing. Get rid of your garbage, which is triggering blockages inside of your physical body. What I'll do right now is uh, some emotional clearing for people. And I, I, the light always sees you as perfect because they won't judge you, but you have to judge yourself to have a healing. So I want you all just to think of an emotional situation that you had in your lifetime, in this life. If you know about a past one, I can do that also, but mainly we're dealing with this life because you're living this life right now. So think of an emotional situation that you had that was negative or positive. It makes no difference because there shouldn't be any, on any energy at all on positive things either. It's still blocked energy. You want to be free of energy, free of emotional stuff, free of duality. So think of it right now, and I'll clear that from you. I'll do five of these for you. 
So, but you have to think of something. So here we go. First one. Everybody have a situation? Okay. Cleared. Can I think of another one? Cleared. Think of another one? Cleared. Another one? Cleared. Another one? Cleared. So you should be feeling your body relaxing more. So that one particular situation for each one of those is cleared from you. But you could have a thousand of these stacked up on top of each other. That's just the one that your body chose to bring up and your soul family got together to create that situation for you. Okay? So the whole thing is get rid of your baggage. Who you think you are is all of your emotional traumas in this lifetime. Because you live in an emotional place here. The aliens gave you emotions because you wanted to choose duality. You wanted to feel life. And you need to get out of that situation to be in peace. You'll never find peace until you get rid of your emotional energies. Otherwise, you're going to be drawing people into your life. It's like going to the movies, the cinema. You're the star in each one of those particular movies. But different players will come in. A different face with the same basic issue. So you want to clean out the issues. I'll do a couple more for you. Another emotional clearing. Think of a situation. It's cleared. Another one. Cleared. It's up to you to judge yourself to find out what those energies are. Because the light always sees you in pure perfection. Because you chose to create and have the experience of what you're experiencing. So that's what the emotional clearing does. It gets rid of your, your, your plate in front of you, of all of your lifetime baggage and stuff. People work through therapies trying to get rid of stuff off of them for years. Spend lots of money regurgitating, having to work things out with some kind of earthly modality. And the clearings can be done within less than a half an hour to clear your whole lifetime of about 95% of your stuff. You know? Can, can the, I the cost is five dollars times your age, and I knock off fifty dollars for this expo, and you're cleared. Yeah. You know, it's half an hour. You have nothing to lose. Can, can I just say one of the reasons why I always tell people to do the whole emotional lifetime clearing is that we have become so detached from how we feel about things. It's usually very difficult to determine what are issues in your life and what are just things that you're picking up from other people. When you do the whole lifetime emotional clearing, you don't have to think about it. It's just done for you. So everything literally is wiped clean. And as you continue to live, then you become more conscious because the things that didn't used to bother you in the past wouldn't bother you now. But as you begin to get triggered by new things happening in your life, you know that this situation is more deeply embedded than you had thought. So you need to look at it in on a per item basis. Okay. Oh, the person who used to just say that thing that used to get me into such a state. Oh, okay, it doesn't matter anymore. But if you still find yourself frustrated by situations, if you still find yourself getting unnecessarily angry over a situation, those are items that you can then have the, the, the clear sight to look at on an individual basis to begin to eliminate those things that are particular to you so that you could begin to enhance your personal life but if you try to piecemeal it, it's very hard. We just don't have the time to really sit. That's why it takes therapy years. Because they have to dig under a lot of layers, a lot of layers to clear out a lot of thought forms that you think is the problem. And it's not the problem. I sit with people and they, they come in and they say, well, I have this problem. And I listen to them and I say, well, that's not your problem. Yes, it is. That's not your problem. Yes, it is. Well, how did you know that? Why? Because you learn to see what is really at the, at the core of the problem rather than what their consciousness is telling them because maybe somebody else told them or they read somewhere that these are the symptoms for this and therefore that is what. So you go off on a tangent and you spend hours and days and weeks looking at something that's really not an issue for you. So if you do the whole lifetime emotional clearings on any of the clearings, basically you Get to wipe the slate clean of everything from your moment of conception to where you are at this point in time. I think it's one of the best things that you can do for yourself. 
I'd like to take this moment to uh, kind of come back to the program. This is supposed to be the two ascensions. Uh, this is supposed to be about ascension. I'll just uh, share with you what I have learned from studying what's out, what's out there around us. Is there's basically three three ascensions being described as being on the table. The first ascension is there's, there's a specific date that is going to happen, like uh, November, December 23rd, 2012, or whatever. That's one version. I do not think that's real. I think that's a darkness trap. The second version is the channelers who are telling us that we have to get out to the Galactic Federation spaceships to make the ascension. So when the ascension time comes, there's going to be a spaceship landing in your yard. It's going to send down a beam, and you're supposed to step into the vortex, s step into the beam of the ship. Another alternative to that is a vortex will open up around you somewhere, and you make the conscious choice of stepping in there. But in my interviews with Ron, I find out that the true ascension, not those that are going to take you off into parallel lives somewhere so you miss the ascension, but the true ascension is not going to be announced. We don't know what the time it's going to be when it shows up, and it's going to be instant boom. You don't do a thing. You don't have time to choose. Because if the true light coordinators, let's say, of the ascension or whatever is behind it all, if they were to announce the time, or they were tell you that it's going to be on this date or whatever, or if they were saying, okay, it's in five minutes, multi-seconds before that, the doctors could construct alternate timelines, take everybody off onto it because it would know, oh, and here it is, let's move everybody out. And the ascension comes and goes, and we're off in the darkness somewhere, a spirit, again, trapped in somebody else's creation. So the true ascension, you're not going to be able to choose, step into, make up your mind about, or do anything about. It's just going to happen. So that's why it's important that you're ready when it happens, which is why we spend our times clearing and healing ourselves, because that uh, increases our chances of being able to just go to the right place with all our body parts and our spirit and everything else, and the whole package gets out of here. So I just wanted to... For those of the tape or listen to this, what are they going to talk about ascension? <laughs> That's what I believe is going to happen. Now, Rod, if, if you could describe, please, the ascension pr process. Okay, we're out of time, but just, just quickly, what's going to happen at ascension? Yeah, just uh, the light, everything in, that was created by the light is turned off. There's nothing. And the light looks for parts of its light that it created, just bits and pieces of you. Remember, if you're only 20% here, where's the other 80%? It'll try to find that, okay? And it'll do that for whatever interval it wants to do it at, and then it starts creation over again, which would be the void coming into light, and then everybody goes into the light planets. But the reason why they have ascension is because of darkness, and the darkness is here, and the darkness cannot attach to light when there's no more light here. So everything is dematerialized. This planet will no longer exist at the time of ascension. So if you want to learn more, Ron, uh, Ron's booth number is uh, 201, right, Ron? Yes, that's 201. correct. 201. Um, Ron has four or five radio, internet radio programs every week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday on bbsradio.com and one on Monday, askoneradio.com. So if you want to learn more, there's endless, endless amounts of information on Ron's website, creationlightship.com. Um, you can go and listen to archives. I know if you're brand new to this, it's, it's, it's a lot of head spinning information and it butts up al against a lot of uh, information you've probably gathered before you got here. One last real quick question. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yes. There are flyers as you exit the room here. So thank you all for hanging in here. I, we didn't lose too many people, which is wonderful. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the time. Thank you very much. <laughs>